Um, Unapologetic about sustainability is a panel dedicated to explorations of um, different angles on sustainability. Our guests here, they equip and inspire individuals and companies to work on the future of sustainability. We will work today on this panel on, with three different angles. We will have destination stewardness with an example from United States. We will work on sustainable products with an example from Estonia and then... Slovenia. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Jaina. Jaina. And finally, on education, the angle that we bring from Azores with Carlos. So, Rob, the floor is yours. Okay, well, uh, thank you for those sticking around today. Um, I think one of the big changes we've all seen coming out of COVID is the importance of destinations to change. And we've all heard destination marketing and really seeing this importance to shift to destination management, looking at uh, how you attract, what tourists you're attracting, how you attract them. And so we're gonna show three different videos, as Marta said. The first one is on a small town in the Western US uh, called Sedona. It's in the state of Arizona. It's right next to California, for those who might not know where Arizona is. And Sedona is a town of 10,000 people, and it attracts today over 4 million tourists each year. So it's actually a poster child on successful marketing. They've done an amazing job in branding the destination, an outdoor mecca, a health and wellness place, arts, community, it, they've really, from a marketing standpoint, done an amazing job. However, the downside to that is they're also now the poster child of over-tourism. Too many tourists coming to an area, as you'll see in the video, that is very fragile. It's a desert environment. And so, um, just to kick this off, in talking about destination stewardship, our job as a content producer was to do a couple things. First. Uh, unify the industry, really educate the, the local trade industry, the local community on the importance of tourism, but also the importance of doing tourism right. And that's where the uh, destination stewardship theme comes in. And stewardship, for those who don't know, is really everyone doing their part to protect, enhance, improve, protect the local environment, to be stewards. And uh, But there's a responsibility on all stakeholders. If you look at the local community, the trade, and then you look at travelers coming to Sedona. And you'll see in this video some very subtle messaging toward the end on trying to educate travelers. And again, that was our job, coming in to produce brand new content. We're not marketing Sedona. Sedona's already marketed itself. Our job now is to take a step back, show people the beauty and the magic that's there, but have a message, a subtle message of, hey, let's take care of this place. Um, so let's kick off the, uh, the first video on Sedona. Sedona. The moments that you share with people here, they're genuine. There's no barrier. It's kind of a place that amplifies your intentions. I think that Sedona forms memories of the way that it's treated. power of Sedona to soothe that part of the brain that creates our distresses so we can live life as a soul. When I've lived other places, when I've been out of town, I dream about Sedona and I feel like I'm there so it, it keeps, I keep coming back.
just to witness this beauty all around us. I feel like a little kid. I really think the soul of Sedona is the integration between the arts and the natural beauty here. There is a certain feeling that comes from this place, and that feeling, I believe, is derived from the land. Long after all of the humans that live here pass, the Red Rocks will still be here. We have a duty to share the magic with people. That was our calling from the beginning. We've done nothing great here. This destination has existed. We are fortunate that we get to take part in it. We really hope that all the people that live here and all the people that come here will treat this place with the respect and the reverence that it deserves. from Slovenia and uh, I come from an NGO running a national um, certification program called Slovenia Green for destinations and businesses. And I would like to comment, you know, that uh, places like that and like Sedona, places like Slovenia as well, and places, of course, um, like Azores on the other side, I think that what you said, that managing them, it's the key uh, if we want to make sure that they are as they are also in the future and that also next generation will be able to experience that what we saw. But you cannot manage things which you don't understand and you don't know what your problems are. And I think that is where um, the power of, I don't know, certificates for sustainable tourism come in. Um, that you need to investigate through that, use them as a tool to investigate what your real problems are and what are the things you need to address in your management activities. And I think that is the biggest power. Like, for example, our Slovenia Green, we have 90% in Slovenia happens in certified destinations. So that means more or less all these destinations are certified. So that means that we know where the problems are, not only on the national level, but on the national level as well. And I think those are really powerful tools when it comes to, and of course, all the digital things which we heard today can be very useful in, uh, in these diagnostics of where our problems lie. Um, and only then you can really act and make sure that the action plans you create to manage and to steward your destination is something that will bring results on the long term. Yeah, and another, another thing I'll add before Carlos, um, you know, one of the big things that I think is really important in tourism today is no one has all the answers, especially on the destination side. A lot of destinations are really still trying to figure it out, and that's okay. We've had two years of change and transformation. It takes time to adapt, especially you look at a destination like Sedona, and we'll talk about the Azores in, in a minute, um, just Every, everyone's going to go at a different pace. And so just knowing that you're not alone, I think that, again, we heard, we've heard collaboration a lot today. I think in that same thing, destinations working together to try to help mitigate some of these challenges of, okay, we've marketed too much, now we need to take a step back and make people see the importance of being a steward. So, Carlos, your thoughts on Thank stewardship? Hi, everyone. I think one of the, the questions here is, you can do this while making money. So the company I manage is very profitable. We have 50 employees full time, which for a tourism company is quite a lot, but we connect science with tourism and education. So we do this by also providing support to our community. It is important that private companies do not expect that our government's doing all, and that we as private sector have to go a step beyond and do this not giving all the power to the travelers that come to us, giving them all the right of entitlement, but also s knowing how to say no and build product that can be better for both, knowing the client better, which 
takes a lot of work, it's true, but it also gets better results, but also knowing what is the limit of the local uh, places of your community, what do they want. So more work, but that long term, we have positioned ourselves inside these global uh, institutions and uh, ATTA is 47,000 members worldwide. So it's the biggest association of the world. And this change of values to connect persons better is working way better for everyone. Yeah. Great. Great. So as we, as we started, we will start, we will give continuity to Jaina. She will present as another example. And this time we will talk a little bit on sustainable products and meaningful experiences. Jaina? Yes, thank you. Um, as I said, you know, we are managing uh, the green scheme of Slovenian tourism, which is a certification program. And we are really supporting destinations and businesses to act more sustainable, to manage their property more sustainable. But as we said, sustainability is a strong management tool. Um, and then it comes, of course, the marketing, and then it comes, of course, the sales. So how to sell sustainable tourism? That's, I think, a really big question. Because sustainable destination, it's, you know, it's the image, it's the things that you do, it's how you manage them, how you market them. But for the guests, you know, they need to have the experience, they need to have a product that you can engage with, that you can experience this green story and everything what we actually saw in the video of Sedona as well. So that is a big question. And on the other hand, whenever you speak to businesses, for example, hotels, and you try, you know, that try to educate them the, on the importance of introducing sustainable measures, there will always be a question behind, you know, what is it in for me? How much more revenue will I get? How many more visitors will come? And that is a legit question, even though we are always saying, no, sustainability needs to be in the core, it needs to be in your heart, you need to follow it because you trust in it. But it's always, you know, of course, this is a commercial um, experience, actually. And then um, it's, it's hard that you say, okay, just do it because you have to do it, because this is a good thing and how you manage it, that you just try to avoid the question about the marketing and the, the sales and the visits. So that's why we were trying to find a way how to actually bridge those gaps and bring the sustainable destinations and businesses closer to the end consumer. So we created an approach of creating routes which are connected the sustainable destinations and sustainable businesses on some thematic experience. We created a route which is uh, where the main experience is the gourmet and the culinary experience is wine and so on. We created one about the we around the wellness product, but all the time just making sure that you connect those who are already committed. Destinations who are certified, businesses who are certified, and the whole product really function as a sustainable one. Um, the whole thing is really done in a professional way so that you have a photographer and that you make sure that the GPS tracks you can download are then really, that they take you, that they take you by the hand. And we had an amazing uh, turnout from that. Only in one year we had like 10,000 downloads of the, of the tracks which we uploaded in the Slovenia Green web page. And we see now the, the turn on investment, you know, how many people are actually coming. We also make the, the, the other side or the other leg of our activities, we have a travel agency who is then trying to push that also on the market through the sales. And we see the amount of um, requests which are getting. So this is really something what people are craving for, you know. We are all the time pushing them. You have to travel more sustainable. But how? How can I do it? You know, it's not so easy. But if you offer them something and saying, look, this is the best of the best, the most, the most sustainable of what we have, this is what you should do. And just to turn it around, this also works like a development tool because we are creating now a similar route in the Balkan region, connecting six, six countries with the Transdinarica biking trail, where, of course, sustainability is agenda, but not in place. So, we created a route, and now we are talking to destinations and businesses along that route, saying, okay, if you want us to list you, to promote you, 
you have to do your part of the job. You have to get certified. You have to be more sustainable. So this is also a dr driving destinations and businesses to become more sustainable. So it works both ways. Of course. And I think it's really important that we, you know, in the travel industry also think about that part. And I know, you know, we all struggle with the same tour operator side as well, how, how hard this job is. But if you don't have a good product behind which stands, it's so much more difficult. So I would like to show you a really short video about the Slovenia Green Wellness Route, which we created in last year. We had really amazing uh, turnout of how many people downloaded the tracks. Um, because this is done um, in, uh, we run a consortium, Slovenia Green, which is a membership driven those who are certified are members and we done with them. So those tracks are freely available. If you go on Slovenia Green Van page, you can download it by yourself and it's like really with all the information. So I would like us to see this short video about one of the trails. The Slovenia Green Wellness Route is a cycling experience that connects Slovenia's natural spas and wellness resorts. But it's more than that. It's a new way of seeing the country that's been called the world's most sustainable destination. Across this incredible route, the common theme is relaxation and rejuvenation. In other words, wellness. But the real message is Slovenia. Sustainability and how to see a country authentically, responsibly, and respectfully. Carlos, what are your experiences when creating product? <laughs> I, th I think the, the most important word for product is impact. And in the morning we had a, a great experience uh, in the first presentation because we were talking about the future and it did it with the team. It was very well organized, it was relevant for everyone and it was very entertainment for, for all to listen. And the product should be like this. If it is like this, it is impactful. Uh, this year, at Futurismo, we will receive um, a master's student that decided to pursue marine biology because a couple of years ago he did vacations with us. So he called us and asked us for our marine biologists to help him study and do the thesis. So it is possible to create products that go deeper than just to, to see because if everyone thinks, no one wants to go to the hospital to do a, a checkup. You have another reason to go. And tourism is the same way. People travel to feel different things. If we can tackle this and prepare products that have different outcomes, the good thing is we can charge more. So we have a part of the company that does 600 persons a year, but those persons are estimated to value 3,000, 4,000 persons. And all across the company, we run 70,000 a year. Those 600s are worth a lot of money because they buy a different product. Yeah, because you can sell it under a different price because yeah. the, the content, the impact is much, different. much bigger, you know, the way you actually structure the whole experience. Would you like to add something? Uh, I'll add two, two points. First, and we talked about it earlier, I love the fact that in order to be included on this route, whatever route it is, biking, wine, food, well. wellness, you have to be certified, green, sustainable, because that's only going to move the needle on the trade, on the private sector, saying, okay, if I want to be included, I got to get on board. And then two, though, it adds so much value, the more, as was mentioned earlier, who's that, mill that millennial audience? Well, they want unique, authentic experiences. Where do you get that? Well, sustainability, regenerative, that's where these unique, authentic experiences are coming. They're real. You're not, you're on a, a smaller group going into a unique area that's never been explored. It's not mass tourism. That's why so much has changed in tourism. And, and the leaders, and you're seeing that in this leadership example. So I love the requirement of being certified. And then the other part, we do a lot of trade workshops, trade webinars, and the number one 
uh, or the most popular uh, workshop or webinar is strategic storytelling for sustainable travel. So what is that? Well, being strategic with the content. So I put that account uh, accountability on ourselves on the work we do to make sure we're telling great stories to engage the end consumer, to educate the trade, and to ultimately attract the right targeted audience. So again, there's a lot in there, but that strategy that goes into unique, you know, sustainable product. Um, you, you need to take that to your marketing to make sure you know you're representing it well, but also not just opening it up to everyone, you're, you're really getting tailored so everyone gets, you know, the target, the right audience comes, has a great experience, and it's a win-win-win for all the stakeholders. Yeah, and if you do it correctly, as you mentioned, step by step from strategic development, storytelling, and right. placing it on the market, then it works. We see, for example, for Slovenia Green Gourmet Route, which we did a year before, um, it, was not, it was in all the media, you know, National Geographic put it, it on the list as the 25 more, most um, best options for the year 23. So it's like they are all picking it up and that is the media coverage you want because then the download started yeah. to happen, yeah. you yeah. know. So, but that means that it's a picture that you are doing it right because you're doing it step by step. You're not doing the shortcuts and you know why, uh, you know, what is the reason behind. Yes. So Rob talked us about accountability and how to educate the trade, and that will take us to our next story of the day. We will bring the Azores case. We would have to end up with Portugal, of course. And um, passing the word to Carlos. Yes. Uh, our last video is about the Azores. Uh, it takes place on the Central Group, and you'll meet some of the local persons that work in tourism. And I will challenge you to see the way they don't speak about sustainability, but they're always speaking about sustainability, which is the best way. They don't pronounce it, but all of that is done. And the Azores have been trying to do something different in terms of tourism and sustainability. We actually met each other during uh, education training. So we had a couple of companies had uh, a one year training course on sustainability and leadership. And going from that, we started a um, private association of local companies for sustainability. Our first decision, that was controversial, was to forbid the, the government to take place in the association. Now we're reconsidering, but we have been helping each other to grow as companies and to place all these educative moments in different aspects, not just tourism, we have basically all sectors of the economics and we are missing one or two islands. So we're 55 and right now we are a ONG. And you will sense this will of the Azorian. We're not doing everything right, quite honestly. Not even as, as a company, we do a lot of mistakes, but this is a journey, not something that has an end. But you will sense what the, the persons from the Azores feel about our land, our culture, and what we want from tourism. Yeah, and I'll, um, I'll just add to this, because we were just here in uh, November filming. Uh, the weather was a little, you know, we had a couple <laughs> rainy days, uh, but we filmed on St. Georges and Pico. So uh, it's not, not all nine mm -hmm. islands, but it was a real sampling. Um, and again, just we were here for just over a week. And uh, just, just that, like Carlos yeah. said, people weren't screaming sustainability. Actually, in all the interviews we did, no one mentioned sustainability. No one mentioned re uh, regenerative, you know, some of the buzzwords in tourism today. And that was okay, because you could see, and you'll see with this short video, um, that it's real. So go ahead with this third video. It's impossible to talk about the Azores without talking about nature. You drive 20 minutes away from the main road and you are in a place that makes you feel like we have an island just for us. And it's incredible when you come here to Azores and you start to feel the nature and the energy that you have here. We can have the four seasons in one day, sometimes in just one hour. It can be even more green during winter time than during summertime. I love being a guide. It's a way of showing how beautiful it is, my island. My island, it's, <laughs> I think everyone will say that. 
The way people communicate, the way people act is quite old school. There's an old school vibe to it. Here you have time to live. We don't have to rush, despite I'm a very active person, but when I'm working, I slow down. Tourism is only good for tourists as long as it will be good for the locals. Like using local products, taking people to places that they wouldn't go on their own. That's the way how I can help to develop this land in a more sustainable way. We have to remember that we are special because of what we are. It's a natural destination that you can enjoy all year long. We spend a lot of time looking at the ocean and we don't really have a clue what's happening below the surface. And when a whale comes up beside you, it's really mind-boggling because it reminds you of how much can be just out of sight. The most that I want is to feel happy that people came here and went out different to their places, to their families, to their world. Tourism should somehow transform you and I try to do my part. I think it's such a special place and uh, you have, I would say, a huge responsibility on your shoulders not to mess it up. <laughs> it needs to remain like that. It needs to remain everything what we saw in this video uh, because it is one of the most special places on the planet for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, you know that. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, I'll just add, um, yeah, that authenticity. Um, you know, all the people we connected with in the work we were doing back in November and then leading up to it. It was, it was real, it was easy, it was good conversations, we're all on the same page. Uh, you know, when you're connecting and trying to pull out a voice or a quote, you, you don't know, this is documentary style, this isn't scripted, you know, read this, read this, it's just how they feel and, and the emotions that they have and the passion and they love. And, and I love some of the quotes that came out of that, you know, someone like, you didn't see the names of people, but Claudia, the woman that really stole the show in the, in the video, you know, she's living the life. She has more energy than I've ever seen in one person packed in, but as she said, she slows down, you know, when the guests are there and has that real authentic experience. And I would put that also on not just the Azores responsibility, but also Portugal's responsibility of, you have an amazing experience on these two islands. Again, it's not all nine islands. And, and I think that's the challenge and the opportunity. You know, do you want to have it turn into a Sedona who's now backing up saying, okay, we attracted way too many people, we marketed it very well, but now we're seeing the results of too many people in a small place. Well, the Azores are small islands, small communities. Um, I, I think this message on this third video was education. And I think that's what really is such a key fabric here is the importance of education with all the work that we're doing, all of us in this room, is educating the local people, meaning giving them a voice at the table. Carlos mentioned that earlier. What is tourism to my family, to my community, to my village, to my island? So important. And, and you know, folks on the Azores need to be included in Sedona. We had to work really hard to get the community involved. You know, there were challenges there. As I mentioned, no one has all the answers. Um, and even what was mentioned with the whales, you know, sometimes we have no clue what's going on, some good messaging. Uh, but educating local community people, educating the, tra the trade, that they need to get certified, they need to embrace this future of tourism around sustainability, regenerative. Uh, and then also, the, going back to Sedona, educating the traveler. So when they come, they're gonna take care of it. They're gonna be conscious of the local community, not be disruptive and, and leave a light impact and also potentially give back through regenerative. So there's a lot in there and education um, just plays such an important role in everything that we're talking about today. Yeah, can I just add that I, I completely agree with you and you now I think that education, doing it with, for all stakeholders is the key, otherwise it doesn't work. And I think it's like, 
um, sometimes it becomes a bit um, hard because you feel like you're preaching the whole thing, the same thing over and over again, and, uh, and that you are educating, and then you see it somehow, well, now maybe we can move forward and open other topics, and no, you can't, you have to go back, and you have to go over and over again, and I think this is one of the jobs which we have to do. But what you said, and I think it, we do it not enough, is educating the visitors. You know, I think that if the whole equation doesn't work if the visitors are now. What we are doing now, it's like we are introducing the education webinars for visitors before they come, you know, because we want them to appreciate our country just as much as we appreciate it, and we want them to be respectful to it. Uh, one of our destination is using this metaphor, and I like it really much. They say that my destination is my living room. And who I invite in my re living room, I choose who I invite. And I also want them to behave the way I want them to behave. Like, I don't know, I want you to take your shoes off or stuff like that. I want you to sit there, not there. And it's the same thing. We need to know what we want, how we want the visitors to behave. We were talking about that quite a lot and what we want from them. But we also need to take responsibility of educating them, you know, and taking them on our side as well. And we do, we do that in, even in our website, we do swimming with dolphins, which is a very fragile activity, always with a marine biologist. And we state really clearly, the client is the least important person in that boat, in that moment. So animals come first, marine biologists and skippers come second, and you pay to be the third. And it's always packed and we are reducing by ourselves. So we work with whales. We have roughly 16 years of scientific data that we give to universities, to institutions, and they provide us more information and we educate the audience. And when we start using, for instance, words as family, uh, hunger, love, to try to explain behaviors to people, people react completely different to a whale. Everyone wants to see the, the breach, the jump, you know, people get, whoa. But we teach them that whale watching succeeded whale hunting. And that's okay, because it was an evolution of the Azorians. We change our relation, and it is a part of that. And we have turned whalers into workers from tourism. And people react really well to that. I remember once in, um, in Fayal, in the Welding Museum, that I was with uh, some, some persons from the trade industry, and they were looking at the video of the whalers and the whales, and they were terrified, disgusted, etc. Then they went to a corridor in which we have the photos of the whalers, and they were, oh, they look so fragile. Of course they were. Most of them could not even swim, but they were hungry. They go out to the sea because they were hungry. And that changed completely the perspective. So tourism has this capacity of changing cap perspective, of changing behaviors. And right now, for instance, with the TTC, we are in a project called Transformative Economy. And this is so interesting. Pfizer is also there for their own economy, not tourism. But we're trying to see how can we turn the client into the product by educating him before he arrives, during and after. So. It's not just the moment he travels, but even beyond, we continue to be in touch and we charge for, for that. So things are happening. This is not something in the sky. It's, it's happening already. Well, I think, uh, Rob. Well, I'll just <laughs> add, because I remember when we were preparing for this panel, um, one of the big messages that you mentioned, and it was talked about a lot today, is collaboration. And it's easy to say it, sometimes difficult to do it. And so I think it's more, you know, just th this collaborative approach, identify people who are doing what you're doing, work together and slowly build your group, your audience, your, your, uh, everyone's on the same page. It takes time, like we've been saying, no one has all the answers. Education is a journey, it takes time. You can't just do it overnight. And I will say regarding uh, sustainability, a little twist here, just our title, un unapologetic, you know, sustainability, you've heard the message today, just do it, don't apologize. So, leave it at that.
I think Rob just wrapped up very well this panel. Uh, we had three, diff three great examples from different places, amazing places. I will now thank our speakers and hope you enjoy this panel. Thank you.